This is actually our regular meeting, but it's also our public hearing for the federal annual plan. So we have a few things on the agenda, and I know that we don't want to take a lot of your time because people want to get out and see that eclipse. So that being said, I'd like to please turn it over to the secretary, please, to call the roll. Oh, um, Madam Chair, would, shall I conduct the public hearing first? Well, yeah, sure. Go ahead at okay. your, at your okay. preference. Thank you. Um, the, this is the uh, public hearing an announcement. The purpose for the public hearing, which was posted at the Federal Properties Management Office website and run in the Gazette on February 23rd, 2024, so as to provide the public ample opportunity to review the plans as they were being developed and to make suggestions to allow the Board of Commissioners to hear comments from interested parties about the federal annual plan. Meetings were also held with the residents at each federal property. At McDonald House on 4424, we had 16 residents in attendance. There were also no substantial uh, substantive items brought up. We had a positive discussion regarding the recent elevator incorporation of the, of the generator. At Florence Heights on 4424, we had three residents and there were no substantive items brought up. The federal annual plan is a HUD template, which consists of the capital improvement plan, the 2025 annual plan and, and amendments to the ad, admissions and continued occupancy policy and section eight administra administrative plan, the certi certification for a drug-free workplace, the certification of payments to influence federal transactions <clears throat> and the disclosure of lobbying activities. Are there any public comments? Is this regarding just the annual plan? Yes, the federal annual plan. Well, well, I guess the only comment I have is from what I said last time, that it should be time of six weeks, I mean, six months, so residents can participate. And uh, and that's the only uh, major issue I have with it. So there are two people from the public. Um, one is, um, oh, there's a couple people actually now. I can help, I can help with admitting. I'm gonna yeah, go ahead and I, admit all I those. Already admitted them. Thank you. So I'm going to turn on the option that allows people to unmute themselves at the moment. So if someone has a public comment they're looking to make, you have the ability to unmute yourself at this moment. We'll turn that back off when we get to the public meeting, the regular board meeting. If I may remind those that are just arriving, right now we're asking, or the director is asking for comments that you may have on the federal annual plan. Um, the director also just noted the comments that were received on site at the two federal locations. So I'm going to then turn it back to Jack to ask those who want to comment on the annual plan. So everyone has who's joined has the ability to unmute themselves if you would like to make a comment on the federal annual plan. Kara, I'm not seeing any. Okay, I'd just like to give it a couple more minutes. Okay, I will now, hearing no public comments, um, besides that uh, one would, that the, the person would like to see this started six weeks out, I will no, now close the federal annual plan, public hearing, and turn the meeting back over to the chairperson. Point of information, I said six months, that would, uh, part of, uh, like I mentioned last month, six, six months. months involving residents from, from then until now. Okay, thank you. Sure. I'll now close the the federal annual uh, public plan hearing. Kara, we actually have someone who's raised their hand. Okay, I just closed the hearing, but go ahead. Um, 
Ms. Dabad, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead. Sure. Yes. Um, that's okay that you can close the hearing. But I did notice there was no meeting. This meeting was not posted at Hampshire Heights for it, today. It, it doesn't affect Hampshire Heights, Ms. Nabod. It's a federal for the federal right, property, so it only affected is, Florence Heights and McDonald House. But this is a regular board meeting, right? At least partially. Yeah, the board agenda was posted to the mailboxes and the office door. Thank you, Ms. Nabod. Um, we'll actually, if if I think we'll move right ahead then with the regular meeting, and I'll ask the secretary to please call the roll. Yes, thank you. Uh, Two o nine p.m. Uh, Chairperson Carney present. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Richards. Not here. She's present. here, but muted. Present. Oh, present. Uh, okay, present. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Cancel. Here. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Brooks. Here. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. I'm here. I just have to keep my video off, guys. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Jones is absent. Okay, Madam Chair, um, with the roll being called. Thank you, uh, Secretary. And the, uh, we usually, as folks know, we do open our regular meeting with a period of public comment that includes resident comment, staff comment, and then general public comment. And so, um, of course, as we do this regularly at each meeting, we are not allowed to respond or back and forth, but please know that we are hearing your comments. Anything that comes from residents that is a concern is noted and will be addressed by the director in the executive director report in the following month. So I'm gonna turn it over to <clears throat> Senior Program Manager, Jack Redman, to go ahead and facilitate that public comment for me, please. Thank you. So the first person who has the ability to unmute themselves is actually a phone number that ends in 9194. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself. I'll give you a second to be able to do that. And then the next person, um, Gwen, would you like to make a comment now during the public resident portion of the regular monthly board meeting? You have the ability to unmute yourself as well. Oh, and it looks like phone number ending in 9194 has unmuted themselves. Can you just let us know if you're a resident of one of our public housing units? Hi, Jack. It's actually um, Jeff Jones. Oh, perfect. Hey, Jeff. Um, can the record reflect that at 2.11 p.m., Commissioner Jones has joined? Thank you. Okay, and then I am going to give one more second for... Um, just to make sure, we did have some Salvo residents on. It looks like they have gone off again. Um, and then Joella, would you like to be a, participate this month as a resident? I'm sorry, Jack, we haven't heard. I know that Ms. Nabod was here and wanted to comment, and I don't know if she's having difficulty in unmuting. Maybe a technical ask. difficulty. Okay. Well, what if it's okay then for uh, for resident Tarbutton to speak, and we'll go back to Ms. Nabard and see if that was a technical problem. Perfect. Uh, thank you. I figuratively putting on a different hat. Um, I just want to say that uh, resident, I still haven't got officially from the board, us administration, what is going on with the uh, bed. Uh, bed bugs. I saw the people here last week, but I mean, last month, but it was never, this is here. It's done. We won't be back. It was never that. And I would just hope that that happens. So people, residents in particular aren't anxious, aren't saying what they think and getting a little hyper, but I would like for us to be open and honest. Uh, and uh, also to acknowledge the, uh, what seemingly that I, from what I know, a quick response to that. 
I also just want to say that uh, I'm being uh, awakened at night by some loud voices in in the night, our neighbor. One tenant, I call him uh, Mark Anthony. He regularly does that. But most recently, and a little disturbingly, I guess a couple is um, living in the car in the parking lot, and they are not happy with each other at times. Uh, police were called. It was uh, reported to the program man, uh, property manager, but it's really uncomfortable on levels. So I was hoping that that could be dealt with. And uh, again, I have to apologize. I'm turning off my video because shouldn't have executive back-to-back -back meetings, y'all. <laughs> That's a toll on the eyes. Thank you. Thank you. The um, also, it, I thought I saw Mr. Edwards join. Uh, yep, yeah. um, Mr. Edwards, you can unmute yourself if you would like. Uh, give you a second. Looks like he's still connecting to audio. Oh, well, maybe we can get back to Mr. Edwards. I will let him know that we'll get back to him. And I'm assuming that Ms. Nabad has no comment or has a technical difficulty. And um, I think that what we can do while we're waiting for Mr. Edwards, oh, look, he's connected now. Mr. Edwards, welcome. Would you like to make a, pub, a resident comment today, Mr. Edwards? We'll give it another second. And then while we're waiting, um, we'll just jump to staff comment real quick um, so we can close that section. Any members of the staff who would like to make a comment? Give that a second. Not seeing any, there are two members of the public. The first is Jerry with the Stop Bullying Coalition. Would you like to make a public comment today or are you just visiting? You're muted, Mr. Halberstadt. Intentionally, can you hear me? Now we can. Um, yes. I am I am just visiting, um, but I appreciate the courtesy and uh, nice to be here with you. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. And then um, Sydney from the mayor's office, I believe you're just visiting, but I just wanna give you the opportunity to unmute yourself if you do have a public comment for today. And then, perfect. And then we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna ask Mr. Edwards one more time to unmute. Um, if not, Chairperson Carney, I don't have any additional comments for today. Thank you, Jack. Um, and thanks everyone for your comments today and for joining us, all of you who had no comments, but for joining us. Uh, we we do move next to the executive director's report. Um, so I will, and, and for folks who there is that that report is included in your board resources, correct? And so I'm going to turn it over to the executive director uh, for make for that report for which there are no questions or comments directly at this meeting, but definitely the notice that you may send any questions or comments to the executive director for clarification. So uh, Director Lieber, please. Yes, this is the executive director's monthly summary for April, 2024. Um, I'd like to just before I begin, uh, remind members that it's only the eighth um, and um, it's only been 21 days since your last meeting. So. Uh, our GPR for the month was $226,126.95, of which to date we've collected 156,021.15. Um, and reminders went out on May, uh, April 5th because we've only collected 69% to date. Um, <clears throat> we had 47 Section 8 recertifications, um, 43 of them completed recertifications, four are outstanding. Um, wait list for our federal applicants, 96 one bedrooms, 34 two bedrooms, three, 23 three bedrooms, two four bedrooms, and section eight has 58. State applicants, we have family, 20,929 families, 
elderly, disabled, 5,344. Public housing had three move outs and Section 8 had three move outs as well. Public housing had three move-ins and Section 8 had three move-ins. Public housing has one unit on notice. End of month vacant ready in public housing was one. Vacant unready was five. And total end of month vacant is six, all of which are pre-leased. We completed three make readies, all of which were complete rehabs. <clears throat> we uh, did 146 work orders came in for the current month. Um, we had begun the month with 57 work orders. We completed 162 work orders, leaving 41 uh, in progress still. We had no um, updates from the bar March board meeting for ED follow-up. And this month, our team coordinated with the Forbes Library and invited them to join our Grow Food Northampton at the on-site mobile markets. While at the properties, they were able to sign up several residents for new and updated library cards and distributed a handful of donated cookbooks. We will be advertising their monthly program calendar going forward and adding information about the library services <clears throat> into our newsletters, including how to sign up for home delivery service. So ends the executive director summary. Thank you, Director Leeper. I have a point of order, uh, Chair. What's the point of order? The point of order is yes, I didn't get the I didn't get it in my packet, the executive report, the director's okay, report. That's not a that's not really a point of order. Is there some way so again that's in the board resource that you have no way of accessing the electronic file? Well, it, it depends. If I get the packet and you hand delivery, I, I appreciate, but I didn't see it. So if there's just any way uh oh, again, I'll look it was at it again. Okay. I'm just saying I didn't get it, so I can't. Okay. I didn't get to go along with it when she was uh, reading that, but uh, I, I'll I'll look at it afterwards. But I think I thought all of it was together when I got the package. So. Again, we hand delivered for those who request a hand delivery. We hand delivered those on Thursday, and it was noted by uh, Jack Redman, who did the communication that the executive director report would be in the board resources on Friday. So we apologize. Commissioner Tarbutton, that that wasn't printed up and run upstairs to you. Okay, so now um, we, our next item on the agenda is the approval of the March 2024 minutes. And I'll ask, is there a motion to approve from the floor? Motion to approve. Thanks, Commissioner Brooks. Any second? Second. Thank second. you, Commissioner Kensal. Moved and seconded to approve the uh, March 2024 uh, minutes. And now we're open for discussion to Commissioner Tarbutton. Who is muted? Uh, I saw. Uh, firstly, uh, I would just like to say um, I appreciate the numbers that are being here. So uh, on each page is enumerated. That's really very helpful. And um, I noticed that there was a Hillside Terrace resident, LTO president. For those of us who don't really know uh, Massachusetts or even Western Mass that well, it would have been nice to see which exact property that was. I did read it later on, but I had no idea. I thought it was a misprint, meaning um, Hampshire Heights. So uh, I appreciate the person coming and all that, but it'd be nice to clarify because we do seem to have so many different properties now. Um, when the part came with the Savo resident that, on page one at the very end, um, I, there are a lot of, there are some things that I, I didn't, didn't say, like on the first, uh, line toward the end, there was some residents really anxiety producing. I didn't say it like that. Um, so I, I worried about that. And there's just a couple of other things in there when it comes to what I'm saying, I don't quite understand. Uh, most of the stuff that I read here were actually quite good. I think on one resident here, you got everything um, almost verbatim, but I don't understand when it comes to me, there just seems to be some error. So if it is all possible, I'd like to submit what I said. And then I also noticed there was a, a, a tenant they, and it's not here who said something. I know they mentioned something about the bully, but it's not even on here as if they weren't even here. I don't know what property it was. Um, oh, no, 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 I got it. Lawrence Heights. I wasn't sure if that's where it was. So thank you. Um, I, I'd like to ask the commissioner, please. Would you offer an addition, correction, and or deletion 
that reflect the remarks that you just made? For example, would you offer to make an addition, or I'm sorry, to make a correction to the Salva resident, which I think was yourself, would you would you be willing to offer a, an addition or correction to what was listed? That's what we're um, expected to do. Yeah, please. Yeah, I do appreciate that, but not right now for a variety of reasons. Um, so no, no, that's I'll why ask, I, I'll, I'll ask. we could postpone it until I can get that to you. But yes, I'll, 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 I'll ask then, as we've done a number of times in the past, I'll ask if you will offer a motion to postpone so that you may provide the correction at the next meeting. Would you please offer that motion? Oh, yes, please. Um, I offer that. There's not just with those comments, but a couple of other things. Well, we'll start with uh, one. We'll, okay. Again, again, we'll, we'll um, ask then if we can have a postponement. Okay. Oh, before, before we do that, let's hear what your other corrections or deletions may be. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just don't want to take up all the time, especially today. Oh, we get all the time. Oh. Okay. Be, well, 90 well, years, we'll have another eclipse in 90 years. Uh, so. yeah. We'll come back. But, we'll all um, come back. It was when I'm talking about some of the things that I said, even as a commissioner, talking about the approval of the uh, annual plan and some of those well, for things. Your, that... For your own comments, you're going to offer us at the next meeting your yeah. written correction. So please re refer to the other items. I, I just did. Uh, I said, as a, the commissioner comments that I wrote about the annual plan, I make comments. For example, page five of eight. Um, I'm sorry, uh, if there were anything that referred to your own comments, you mean uh, as a tenant? Is that the only co comments that I can uh, offer? No, no, you can them? offer whichever corrections you'd like. You can offer them today, but in there, because we're going to postpone anyway to give you the opportunity okay. to make up the corrections as you see fit, I'll Perfect. just ask if in our postponement, meaning at the next at the next meeting, that you offer all of those together, if that if that's okay. It sounds really great. That's a great plan. Thank you. Is there a second, please, to the motion to postpone? Please. From the floor. Second. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Moved and seconded to postpone to offer Commissioner Tarbutton the opportunity to give her corrections at the next meeting. Oh, and uh, I'll let the I'll let the director call the roll. Yes, um, this is a motion to postpone um, the March 2024 regular meeting minutes uh, to the next month's meeting. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That motion carries. So we'll move right on to the next item of business. There being no unfinished business, we have two items mm -hmm. under new business. And one, I believe, is going to need to be postponed as well. And I believe that is the, actually the second. So let's take up the first item, which is the resolution 2024-03, the approval of the fiscal year 2025 federal annual plan, capital fund, and certifications. And may I have a motion to approve from motion the Motion to approve. And a second, please. Second. Moved and seconded. And now we will open that for discussion. And that is discussion and comments and questions from commissioners regarding the federal annual plan. Uh, mm. uh, oh, yes, sorry. Commissioner Tarbutton, yes. Okay. And again, I have to apologize. I'm not at my most attentive right now, so but forgive me. So this is the federal annual plan. That's correct, as opposed to what we dealt with last term, which was the state annual plan. Uh, let me clarify again. Uh, let me clarify again. So um, we have federal properties and we have state properties. And I know. Each of those properties, meaning the federal properties, has its own annual plan that we dealt with last month. And this month we have on the agenda the federal annual plan, which takes a, which really relates to the two properties that we have that are federally regulated. And those are McDonald House and Florence Heights. Does that clarify for you? It was, it was, and I, it was in the, it, it was most definitely. I was just making sure. So I appreciate that you uh, taking the time to explain it. But oh, I and knew again, not I just, it's not just an explanation for you because if you're confused, I can be sure that there are members of the public okay. that are confused. So thank you okay. for the question. Sure, of course. I just 
on one of the on the plan, I just oh, we had to deal with numbers today here. Uh, it was just something that it was dealt with. I think it was McDonald's house. Um, I it said something about the pedestrian paving none. Well, okay, you see that number? I don't know what page is on, but do you see that? I think that question is for you, Director Leeper. Do you see the page that Commissioner Tarbutton is referring to? It's page number three, I think. It's page three. I think. Refers to, or maybe it's easier for uh, Director Leeper to find it under the topic, the pavement at McDonald House. Oh, uh, I can give you, I can try to give you the ID number. Right, I she's can't. looking, no, she's no, looking. No, no, give me just a minute. We'll, just, we'll give you a minute. Mm -hmm. It, that belongs to Florence Heights, not McDonald's House. Oh, but it's under Joseph McDonald's, is it not? Yeah, so the federal program lumps um, all the federal numbers under Joseph McDonald's House. Um, they never separated them out. Um, and it's it's MA 0260001 as Joseph McDonald's House. Um, it includes McDonald's House and Florence Heights. Okay. Well, it's a little confusing to see that because what I, I questioned was, and I and I understand these forms that come federal, so I'm not, that's not so much my problem. But when you talked about pavement repairs, the reason why I'm saying that is because there were at least, a, you know, some residents of McDonald's talking about the side uh, and, and who have wheelchairs saying at McDonald's house, the bumps and whatever were hurting their kidneys. So I, I was going to say, I hope that that's being adjusted for that, but so my question is, if that's for uh, Florence, you know, really good, but I had <laughs> had hoped, and I thought I was about to cheerlead that it was happening at McDonald's house as well, because so there are- If you go to the, if you go to the thing that has our letterhead on it, that has, <laughs> it has two call, it has two columns. It's the easiest sheet to read. And okay. it tells you to, down towards the bottom, it's got two boxes and it says Florence Heights and McDonald's house. And mm -hmm. it's the easiest piece because it's not really a federal document. And it's what we use to explain to the residents too. And it says what's being done and what year it's happening in. Mm -hmm. um, I really recommend that you pull that out of the packet oh. and take a look at that because okay. it's so much I, I, easier. I'd like to do it now. I'm just trying to find it. Sure, sure, sure. Um, um, but uh, so if, if since you know this and know where everything is, can you just tell me if a pavement improvement is included in McDonald House for the reasons that I mentioned? So 2023, replace appliances and flooring. 24 is replace electrical panels. 25 is replace flooring and cabinets and LED lighting in the common areas. 26 is repointing re of bricks and replacing of cabinets. And 27 is replacing appliances and flooring. As I understand what you're saying, Director Leeper, I didn't hear you uh, enumerate any of those items as referring to any of the pavement improvements to which Commissioner Tarbutton is referring. Yeah, we have we have sixty four thousand dollars included, um, and we will be utilizing um, part of that to be fixing the ramp. Okay, if fixing the ramps. I think that the question was regarding the pavement. The, the pavement. pavements. Oh, pedestrian, okay. pedestrian paving, non dwelling site work, asphalt concrete paving. Okay. It says pedestrian paving, Florence Heights, $64,400. Yes. But we will be using a portion of that to repair the ramps that are um, problematic here at McDonald's House, too. I was asking about the pavement. I, I didn't know there was an issue with the ramps, but yeah, okay. Well, I because I just mentioned McDonald House, so I didn't know if some of that money would also be on the pavement, not the the the, the ramps that people walk through when they go out of the properties going someplace on so, the property. So to, to bluntly answer your question, the sidewalks and the driveways have no. Um, we have not allocated any funding for. That. Okay, that's all I ask. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Okay, are there any other commissioners who have some questions or clarifications that they'd like regarding the annual plan, the federal annual plan? I am looking, I don't see any commissioners raising their hands.
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Commissioner Cancel, please. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, in our packet, we received, as part of this uh, federal annual plan, we received a few documents, one of which um, had, uh, says resident advisory board. Is that something we're voting on or is this something that was shared with us just for information? I, I'm going to actually take that question just because um, it's a question we heard last year, exactly the same question. So. Actually, what the what the federal plan or what the federal regulations call for in terms of a resident advisory board really just means either the local tenant organization, if it's if it exists and is represented at either of these two properties, McDonald or Florence Heights, or those number of residents who did show up at those sites, those Basically, what in it, and if you read in the regulation in the in the <clears throat> in the in the federal regulation, it refers to the resident advisory board is actually any of the group of residents that show up to make comment. So I'm going to turn that to Director Leeper and clarify again for us the number of residents that did provide public comment at those two locations, and that will help clarify that that group of residents in total, in terms of what the federal government re regards, in terms of the federal regulations, that group of residents are the resident advisory board. And that's how it's worded actually in the regulation. They say either the, lo the, the resident advisory board is either the LTO at those places or the sum total of the residents who provided comment. Yes. And uh, so, Director Lieber, yes. Yes, so we held meetings at McDonald's House and at Florence Heights. Uh, we had 16 participants at McDonald's House and three participants at Florence Heights for a total of 19. Um, so 19 residents uh, made up a resident advisory board based on what the regulation says. Um, there is a resident um, uh an LTO officially recognized at McDonald House, but the officers have um, either resigned or passed away. There's one officer still present. Um, I've been working with them to get it up and going again. And um, they've started to hold little meetings to get it together, but it, it wasn't enough um, for us to, I mean, we invited them obviously, but um, not enough for them to necessarily sign off on anything, so to speak. So um, we did what we were required to do and then some um, as far as uh, the postings and the meetings, because we heard what the board said about wanting as much um, input from residents as we could get. Um, and um, and so that's what consisted of the resident advisory board. Can I ask a quick follow up on that? Yes. I know you mentioned 19 and just for ease of math, let's call it 20. Um, and so compare that please to the, not the numbers, but the percentage. So what percentage of our portfolio is federal? And then we can more easily see what, you know, how we rate up in terms of the resident participation in the federal plan versus the state plan. What percentage? So 18, of, oh, yeah. 18 percent is federal. Okay. Um, 18 percent of our units are federal. And um, um, so we have 618 phys uh, fiscal units. 110 of them are federal. One of one of the federal is used as a community room. So really, it's only one hundred and nine that are, you know, receiving rents. Um, and so it's a very small number of our units. But well, it's one hundred and nine out of six hundred and something, which is basically yeah. one sixth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. OK, yeah. so and, and off and I know you don't remember necessarily off the top of your head. How we had many three, three last year? How many? Mm -hmm. I'm not asking that. I'm asking how many comments for the state plan did we have? Uh, and if you don't remember that, we that's had, fine. Uh, we had seventy. We had seventy people participate in the meetings. Okay. Um, and we had four or five uh, comments. Um, uh, at, at the hearing. 
at the hearings, yeah. Yes, so let me call that please 75 people and let's call the, the federal 20 for ease of math. So it sounds like we had actually a much higher percentage of resident comment from the federal uh, plan residents than we had from the state plan, right? Mm -hmm. We had 20, which is um, that that percentage is higher than the uh, 75 that you just mentioned of the 500 some odd plan mm -hmm. uh, units. Yeah. Does that make sense to folks? I'm just making that as a comment that yes, it's a higher percentage. So oh. I don't know if that clarifies your question, Commissioner Kansa. Um, yeah, that helps a lot. Um, I'm just wondering if it's possible now, uh, just a, sort of a technical question, if it's possible to make a motion to discuss the resident advisory board um, further in a, in a, in a uh, future meeting. Um, just because it it, it doesn't, it, it, um, yeah, I'm just unclear about how that board operates, and um, I would probably like to see it a little bit more formal. Okay, so, I'll take that as, as I'm, I'm going to actually take that under advisement as the chair and see if we can have a much more clear presentation about the term resident advisory board and how that manifests itself whether we have, when we have LTOs and when and in the situations such as today's federal annual plan, where we don't have functional LTOs at either McDonald or Florence Heights. And so therefore have to fall back on their generic term of res resident advisory board, which is essentially those numbers of residents that have provided comment. There's no official board. Again, it's a term, but I'll ha we're happily yes. and actually at the next meeting, uh, we'll we'll have a presentation to better clarify that. Would that be? Would that no, no, that no. Thank you, uh, Chair Carney, but that's not that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for a discussion about um, possibly restructuring that so that we actually have a resident advisory board, which is which which presents another opportunity for residents. Uh, to take part. Again, so if there LTO, is an LTO, the LTO yeah. supersedes. If there's an LTO, then yeah. we don't fall back on a resident advisory no. board. LTOs that, take, yeah. That That is definitely clear. I'm talking about in, this, in the instance where there is no LTO. Yes. In, in the instance where there is no LTO, we there is no allowance for the creation of any other board. The only uh, the only creation of boards we have that are allowed are LTAs that aren't approved as LTOs and LTOs. But uh, rather than take the time today, why don't we actually have this clarification in a presentation followed by some discussion at the next meeting? Okay, yeah, I, I see a thumbs up. And can we take note of that, Secretary? Yes, yes. Uh, and, and just so that you know, um, RAV would allow for Section 8 participants to join as well, which okay. is, it, you know, that, that's a lot of people. Yeah, so right. let, let's, not, let's to discuss it then at the next meeting so that then there can be, would that be a, okay, Director Leeper? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, that's noted and we'll put that on the next month's agenda in addition to the postponed minutes and other things. And I'm going to move on to well, I, I had a an, question additional quest, an additional question. Yes, yes, from yes. From Commissioner Tarbon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's along the same lines. I'll be really quick, uh, uh, quick with this. But when, I, when you said LTO, is that LTO recognized by the Mass Union of Public Housing Tenants? Mm -hmm. And because this is the first time people I know in the well, Fort Sander had one, but Savo, I and as we just went through all that training, which was really great, and then even. The, it said there was a distinction with an LTO to be with recognition of Mass Union Public Housing. So I think we're getting the language because we had a tenants association for, for a while. So I joined uh, Commissioner Consell. Let's get some clarification with this stuff because it seems mudgy and just thank goodness that that training and I'm glad I got the uh, transcript. So I'd like to bring that to be better prepared to answer some of these questions. 
So noted. And then we're going to move that whole discussion to an agenda item on the May meeting. Madam Chair, would you like me to read the resolution regarding the federal? No, end? first, before you do, I want to ask if Commissioner Richards or Commissioner Brooks or Commissioner Jones have any other questions or clarifications they need regarding the annual plan? No comment. Okay, hearing none, then yes, please, Director Lieber, would you please, or Secretary <laughs> Please read yes, the resolution. And, and I'm sorry, did I miss um, who made the first and who made the second? That was uh, Commissioner Richards and Commissioner Cancel seconded. Second. Thank you very much. Okay. Resolution 2024-03, adoption of the 2025 annual plan and related policies and certifications. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority op operates a public housing program and a housing choice voucher program, both funded in part by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. And whereas the Northampton Housing Authority has prepared an annual and five-year capital plan in, a, in a compliance with 24 CFR 903. And whereas HUD requirements for adoption by the Board of Commissioners include certification of, of various forms. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Northampton Housing Authority adopts the 2025 annual plan and amendments to the admissions and continued occupancy policy and Section 8 administrative plan. And further be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority hereby authorizes and directs the, its executive director to sign on behalf of the authority the certification for a drug-free workplace, the certification of payments to influence federal transactions, the disclosure of lobbying activities, and further, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority, believing its annual and five-year capital plan to be cons consistent with the comprehensive plan of the City of Northampton, hereby authorizes and directs the Executive Director to seek the signature of Mayor Ciara, and further, be it resolved, that the amendments to the admissions and continued and occupancy plan and the Section 8 administrative plan shall take effect upon approval of the annual plan and five-year capital plan by HUD or July 1st, 2025, whichever is sooner. And further, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority in adopting the PHA plan, admissions and continued occupancy plan and Section 8 administrative plan preserves the severability of the remaining segments and plans and policies of any portion of the plans and policies not approved by HUD. Back Thank you, you Secretary uh, Leeper. And as we've heard, that resolution was uh, forwarded by Commissioner Richards and seconded Commissioner Cancel. And I'll ask the Secretary to please call the roll. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, resolution 202. 4-03 approval of the fiscal year 2025 federal annual plan capital fund uh and certifications chairperson carney yes thank you vice chairperson richards yes thank you commissioner jones yes thank you commissioner brooks yes thank you commissioner tarbutton springfield i'm gonna say no i won't list the reasons why but there's just some things that i saw and that, that i have some concerns so thank you Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cancel. Uh, abstain. Thank you. Okay, that being four, four yeas, one abstention, and one nay, that resolution carries. Thank you. We have one more item under new business, and I understand that there may need to be a tabling of this resolution as well. So first I'll ask if the our uh, uh, secretary will please read the resolution and then I'll ask for a motion to table or postpone. Uh, yeah, this is this was to accept the low bidder of uh, Supreme Earthworks for fish 360092 for hillside uh, sidewalk replacement in the amount of $57,500. But um, uh, the takeover process of the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority um, is midway. And if we accept that process, it's just going to take longer. And so the state has asked us to wait on uh, that particular part of this process so that it doesn't create them having a more difficult time in switching those properties over to us. Okay. Thank you, Secretary Leeper. And before I turn to any discussion, I'm going to first ask, we, is there... we, 
motion is there a motion to postpone or table no i'm sorry uh, i misspoke we need you to reject the bid i'm sorry that i misunderstood that communication i understood it as a postponement or a tabling so my apologies i'll ask then first because i'm sure that there'll be some explanation needed I'll ask, please, is there a motion to reject the bid? Because I think the resolution is worded to accept the low bid. So here's the problem, Secretary Lieber. We have a resolution that has been uh, posted on the agenda to accept the low bid. And now I don't think that it is appropriate for us to uh, just we can't just list a new resolution that says to reject the low bid. So I would ask then, I, I guess, oh, okay, what I'll ask is that we deal with the resolution that is on the floor, which is to accept the low bid. I guess I'll ask if somebody puts that forward and then I will make the argument and we'll turn to uh, Director Lipa to further explain, to vote no. Co uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Attorney O'Connor, as you see it, we have a posted agenda item to accept the low bid, and now we're being asked by the state to reject the low bid. And so I think that the only thing we can do is to place that resolution on the floor and make the arguments to vote no. Okay, yes, uh, Attorney O'Connor agrees with me. So what I'll do is I'll ask, please, if there is a motion on the floor to accept the low bid as has been listed on our agenda with the understanding that we have been requested to reject that and we'll do, you know, we, you know we'll just have to see how the vote shows. So is there a motion to accept the low bid uh, as so stated from anyone, please? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Is there a second? Please. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. So it's been moved and seconded to accept the low bid. And now I'm going to turn it first to Director Leeper to explain why we have such an item on our agenda, and yet we have a request from the state to actually vote no. Yes, originally we um, had put this on uh, the agenda um, to accept the low bidder of Supreme Earthworks for the replacement of um, the hillside sidewalks. Now, we ask that the Board of Commissioners reject the low bid for this fish number 360092 replacement of the hillside sidewalks. There were two bids received. The lowest um, bid, eligible bid and responsible bidder was Supreme Earthworks for 57500 However, it was over budget. We, we received a project cost estimate from Hill Engineers, Architects and Planners Incorporated for $46,682 and set a construction budget for $49,000. Our construction manager from EOHLC recommends that we reject the bid. Typically, we would go with the low bidder, but that he recommended that we reject, she recommended that we reject the bid and go out to bid after the Hampshire County Regional Projects are transferred to Northampton, which is set to occur in early May. Thank you, uh, Director Leeper. And I'm first, I'm gonna to turn to a question from Commissioner Tarun. Um, hold on a second, I'm going, I'm going through all the notes. We'll wait, we'll okay, wait. No, I'm here, sorry guys. Um, This is really confusing to me. As one, as I mentioned, we have a property and for me, sight unseen of the property. There's no visual interactive thing of this place so I can get an idea of what you're talking about. And as I just went through all the trainings that we all did so we can keep up with former DHC for our training, I don't know who the bids are, who the people are, what we're talking about. So this is in some way like put to me and I'm just putting a good faith in on what is being said without really trying to understand it. So I'm going to object because I don't know what's going on and I felt like I wasn't a part of it. I was just asked to vote and that's not always okay with me. So I would like to see if I need to ask you, uh, um, Chairperson, if we can have an uh, agenda to put these properties because we're queuing, uh, 
uh, uh, acquiring property. So we get an idea of what we're talking about. I mean, we don't want to visit it, but I'd like to see what we're talking about. Where, how far, this, that, that. Thank you, Commissioner Talbot. Well, we'll all have an opportunity if we, when we, if we reject this low bid, if we accept it, I think then we're up, <laughs> we're in trouble. But if we, we if we uh, reject this bid, we will still have another opportunity because it will have to come before us. So I think it is noted, Director Lieber, have you noted the concerns by Commissioner Tarbutton so that we may better address those when it does come before us, seeking for an acceptance of the low bid? Yeah, I, I mean, the part of the package has all the information with who the bidders were. Uh, yeah, okay, but what, what we'll do is yes. we'll explain that next time. Yes. We'll, we'll exactly. explain that le next time and maybe in advance, maybe between now and when it comes to us, because it could be a very m number of months before it actually comes to us based on what's going on at the state level and there are all the... So in that meantime, can we try to uh, better educate Commissioner Tarbutton on the on the uh, particular concerns yeah. that she... I'm happy to meet with, with, with her at any time to explain. Okay, what thank you so well, much. Uh, well, uh, uh, can, can I just say something, please? I, I'm just saying, I, I would, when we're talking about you giving something in the package and then, then the resources, that's kind of a mixed thing here. Why don't we put all this stuff in one thing? And when you hand deliver it, it's all there. I, I think it's almost like, well, we said we did this. Oh, but you didn't get that. So let's try to stop with that part here. And I just ask if there's an interactive thing where we can see these different properties so we will know what we're talking about. And also, as we just learned in our training, the part about bidding and procurement, we're supposed to be knowing this. So if you want to put all that in there too, fine. But I think maybe we need to be a little bit, I, I don't like saying we're going to educate you because we all need to be educated. I'm just speaking out about it. So let's educate all of us, if you don't mind, please. Thanks. Thank you so much, Commissioner Tarbutton. Well noted. Uh, and yes, Commissioner Cancel. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still a little bit uh, confused by the um, uh, by the uh, issue with EOHLC. Is there is there a person that that we spoke to in particular? How do we prevent this in the future? So I'm going to turn that to I'm going to take that and turn it to Director Lieber. So HLC, we have a um, we have a specific construct construction manager that when things get uh, to a certain point, you know, we have processes and procedures that we have to follow when it's a state property. This happens to be a state property. It's part of the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority, which, um, as you know, uh, the legislation was put through to bring that into the Northampton Housing Authority group of properties. And because that's transitioning, um, and because this came in over bid, usually what happens is, is when it comes in over budget, um, they would just adjust the budget because it's my, you know, it's their money. So when you, you would just take, you would accept the low bid and they try to adjust the budget to, to accommodate it. But because it's coming in under us and it would cause them a headache, they've recommended to reject the low bid. And, and we just got the call. Uh, otherwise we wouldn't have put it on um, the, we wouldn't have even put it on the agenda uh, as, it, as to accept. But we just got the call uh, about rejecting it so that it could go smooth, more smoothly and so that um, so that we could um, go out to bid yet again. Because, you know, the one bid was 98250 and the other one was 57500 We feel that, you know, we could get, we could probably get a better price. Um, especially when the engineer is, you know, estimating the cost to come in at $46,682. So typically we would have to take the low bidder um, because, you know, it's advertised, it's all this different stuff. And so, um, but if you reject the low bidder, that that essentially sends us out to rebid the whole project. Can I ask a quick clarifying before I go back to uh, Commissioner Cancel? Yes. So what's this? What if we accept it? What if we all vote yay today? What happens? We have to give them the job. Um, okay. Okay. So, but... so if that's just as long as people know that a yay vote on this means we give the job to that to that bidder that you just described with the I forget the figure that you I forget the figure, 
But I mean, basically, then we are committed. If we accept, if we vote to accept, if everybody votes yay or a majority vote yay. And we really, uh, we really can't do other projects for Hampshire County until everything's closed out from there because they're trying to transfer bank accounts. They're trying to, um, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they're trying to, it's a lot of work to take on everything. We're taking over their bank accounts. We're taking over their properties, you know? And so they're, they've just asked um, as a, you know, help us out here, try to make our lives easier just to wait on this until they get that part done so that they don't have to deal with this at this moment. Could I ask why aren't why wouldn't why wouldn't an emotion to postpone this or table this satisfy that? Well, because then the vendor can uh, the vendor can come back and say um, that uh, you know we didn't accept the low we we uh, because first of all um, their their bid is only good for a certain number of days. Um, I'd have to look and see how long that is for, but, um, I think they're only required to hold it for 30 days. So we would then be required to sign something. Um, it just would create a lot of problems, um, to postpone it rather than to reject the low bidder because you can reject the low bidder because it's over budget. I understand, but it, it could very well be that this body here today will vote to approve. We have no idea what the votes will be until they're cast. It could very well be. I think we have lost one commissioner. It could, and we need four. We need four votes for anything to carry. So it could be that we will have an affirmative vote. Who did we lose? Uh, we lost commissioner. Oh no, I'm sorry. I thought we lost someone. We do have a full, a full. Uh, we have our full board uh, here. We have the six people in the board here. So yeah, I mean, just just, but we, I don't know how everybody's going to vote. So just want to, and I'm going to turn it back to Commissioner Cancel because he has a follow up. Uh, and then, thank you, uh, Chair Carney. Actually, <laughs> I almost interrupted uh, Director Leeper because she answered my question right after right off the bat. But then you made those two clarifications, Chair Carney, that I, actually I thought. Um, I really appreciate because those were probably going to be my next couple of questions. So thank you for that. My confusion was around why it got on the agenda, and then um, and then we're uh, we're um, uh, voting differently on it. Um, but it was because we got a last minute call. That that was that was my confusion. It was like yeah. how how did this turn into okay. So, okay. so it was it was Friday at you know almost four thirty that we got the call from them. Okay, and, so and it was already on the posted agenda. You, you mentioned it was a construction supervisor or something. Yeah, our our constru it's called the construction manager at HLC. Um, I forget what her name is. Um, okay. Jack, what's what is her name? Are you on? Linda, here? Linda oh, Katsudas. Yes. Yeah, Linda Katsudas. Yep, Linda. All right. Um. Thank you. Thank you, Mo. Oh, sure. Okay, commissioners, anyone else have any concerns on, and again, the resolution is written asking us to approve, but it sounds like the state is asking us to vote no, <laughs> okay? I know it's confusing and it's a little weird, but hey, I'm willing to do it. I'm just saying I am willing to uh, accept at face value the state's request that we reject, meaning vote no on the motion to accept. Hearing no other questions or need for clarification. Oh, yes, yes, Commissioner Kansa. So sorry, so sorry. Oh. Actually, this is a question for uh, Attorney O'Connor, um, just, just in, um, in terms of legality, because I put the motion forward to approve um, it, is it okay for me to uh, vote no, even though I put the mo uh, motion forward uh, to approve? Uh, absolutely. There's been an explanation that can reasonably cause you to change your mind. So that that's awesome. Fine. Great. Thank you for that. Thanks. And I'll hope that the minutes will reflect that question and answer because, yeah, anybody reading the minutes might be confused by somebody who made a motion and then they, voted they no. might be a little crazy. Yeah. And I see Commissioner Tarbutton has, an, has another question. 
Uh, you mentioned uh, it is a, 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 are we down one commissioner? I thought I, I don't thought so, but I just I just couldn't see oh, the screen correctly. I don't see Commissioner Richards. Is Commissioner Richter here? Oh, you're right, Commissioner Tarbutton. We must have lost Commissioner Richards. Well, so be it. You know, <laughs> what what can we do? We're gonna. I think we lost Commissioner Richards. Yet we do still have our quorum, and I think we live with the results. <laughs> and I'll ask the secretary, please, to call the roll. Yes, this is a motion to uh, reject the low bidder supreme. Earth no, no, no. The, mo the motion is to accept. Motion is accept. Okay, I'm sorry. Motion is to Thank accept you. the low bidder supreme earthworks e for EOHLC 360092 Hillside Sidewalk replacement for $57,500. Chairperson Carney. No. Vice Chairperson Richards. She's not here. Uh, Commissioner no. Jones. No. Commissioner Brooks. No. Commissioner Tarbutton. Abstain. Oh. Commissioner Cancel. No. Thank you, everyone. That motion is defeated, and it would have required four yes votes in order to be carried anyway. Yeah. So I, I thank you for that and for your understanding. And I don't think there's another item under new business. I think we might be done with that, in which case I'll ask if there's a final motion for today. I make a motion to adjourn, adjourn please. Is there a second? I need a drink. Oh, I'll take that second. as a second. Okay, okay, two seconds on the motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, there is no debate on that. It's non-debatable. Oh, to me. Sorry, no. I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to uh, actually just before we go ahead and well, you can call the roll. We're voting to adjourn. Uh, Chairperson oh, just, Carney. Yes. Um, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Cancel. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner uh, Tarbutton Springfield. Yes. <laughs> okay. I think I got everybody. All right. Thank you. And I'm going to just tell them don't look at the sun. All right. And have a great afternoon. We'll see you next time.